Hello, my name is Aaron Lakota. I'm here at Jerry's Music Shop in South Hadley, Massachusetts, once again. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk with you about, about some alternate fingerings on the oboe. So here I have a student instrument. Um, the, the reason I have a student instrument is because the uh, student instruments and professional instruments will have some different keys on them. So I'll talk about both. But um, the main two alternate fingerings that we have on the oboe are the uh, variations of F and E flat. Okay, so those are what I'm going to be talking about. There are some other ones, but um, for the purpose of this, we'll just talk about those. So, um, generally, we have the regular F, which is this, and then we have the forked F. So, my rule of thumb with, the, with uh, using the forked F is anytime you have a D fingering, okay, so what exactly is a D fingering? So, if we, if we finger a D, we have all, our, all of our uh, fingers down with our pinkies, um, not down. So a C natural is a, is part of the D fingerings, a C sharp, an E flat, okay? So any of these I consider D fingering. So anytime you have all of these fingers down, you're going to want to use the fork F, okay? So why is that? We don't want to go from a D to an F because we're picking up one finger and putting it back down, okay? So it's two motions, whereas the fork F is just one motion. So if we go from a D to a forked F, it's that. If we go from a D to a regular F, you're picking up that finger and putting it back down. So if you do that, you'll get what I call glips in the sound. So a glip is just a huh, okay? So any sound that's sort of, you have multiple sound within that, okay? So if we're using the, the low C, for instance, we're gonna use not the regular F because we'd be picking up this finger and putting it back down, but we're gonna use the forked F, okay? So C to forked F, D to forked F. C sharp, we're going to use that fourth F again. So C sharp, fourth F, and then E flat to fourth F. So once again, anytime you have what I call the D fingering, so we have the D down, and then any of these, we're going to use a fourth F. So on a professional instrument, we have what's called a left F also. So, so we have some uh, we have some options. So if we're going from a low uh, C, for instance, we can go from C to left F, okay? So what is the left F exactly? If we look at the F key here, we have this linkage that's just putting that down, okay? So it's just an F. Instead of using this key, you're using this key. So you can go from any of these D fingerings to left F, okay? And I prefer to use the left F versus the forked F because they have a different, there's a difference in sound between the left F and forked F. Uh, left F um, and the regular F, at, uh, to my ear, are pre uh, preferable in their in their sound. Something I want to mention about the uh, the fork F is that oftentimes in method books um, you'll see that it's marked as fork F with the E flat key. So this is very common. Um, what it does is sort of opens up the the sound of the fork F. So let me just demonstrate the difference between the two. So uh, first I'll play the fork F without the resonance, the E flat key, and then I'll play it with it. So you should hear a difference. So it both, both raises the pitch a little bit and it opens up the sound, okay? So um, if you're playing fast passage work, you're likely not going to want to use that um, resonance key, but if you're holding a note, um, if you're holding the fork F for any period of time, you're going to want to put that down. Now to recap on the Fs, we have three different types of Fs. So, um, I just want to explain one more time when we're going to use that. So we have the regular F, which is just this one, uh, which everybody should be familiar with, which you're going to use, you're going to favor that uh, most of the time. Then we have the forked F. So anytime we go from a D fingering to an F, we're going to want to use that. So again, the D fingerings are C, C sharp, or E flat. So you're just going to uh, raise your middle finger. And again, sometimes that you'll want to use your E flat key on that to make bring up the pitch a little bit and open the sound. Um, on the professional instruments, you'll have the option to use the left F. So anytime you're using the regular F, you can use the left F instead, assuming you're not using these pinky keys already. Another alternate note that I want to talk about is the E flat. So we have two different types of E flat on the oboe. We have the regular E flat, which is this here. Um, so we're fingering a D and then the pinky key the furthest away from us, okay, the furthest down. Um, so that's our standard E flat. The other E flat is what we call the left E flat, which is um, the left pinky is going to put, push down the key the furthest, the closest to the oboe. 
So on student instruments, you'll notice that um, there's there's um, fewer keys here, so we just have it's going to be this key that's all the way all the way in here. So when are we going to use the left E flat? Um, generally, if we're going from we don't want to we don't want to switch pinky keys, so we don't want to slide our our pinkies. Um, so if you're using if you're going from an E flat to a C sharp, for instance, or maybe a D flat in that case, we're just gonna we're gonna go alternate from our um, our D flat to our left E flat. Okay, so we're gonna go from this side to this side instead of going from here to here. We don't want to slide. Okay, so um, if your oboe is well adjusted, you should be able to put down the left E flat and the C uh, and the D flat at the same time, and it should come out as a D flat. Okay, so let me demonstrate that. So this will be a D flat and then an E flat. And I'm keeping my E flat key down the whole time, the left 